So during lunch break, I decided to come in here and uh, get some stuff done. Uh, I only planned to spend a moment or two doing this and um, I ended up planing a whole side of my, what I'm now gonna call the Nekodi, neck body combination. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm mounted up, plane the other side, get it nice and flat, get it looking good, so that then I can start planning out uh, the body, which is that side. So I'll be playing it like that. Yep. Next side, body side. Yeah, that's gonna be it. Let's get going. <laughs> Many, many arrows lit. Yeah, I changed some of the colors. We have it. And there we have the beginning of my soon to be new guitar. I did have a proper, I've got a clamp over there, but I don't have enough room to use it, so I'm gonna to have to improvise a clamp. This works surprisingly well. Yep. So I'm gonna start with um, a scrub plane. Oh, I wonder if I should actually start with a chisel or a knife. But my scrub plane, I think that'll do the job. Got it uh, for 10 pounds at a uh, car boot sale. It's a bit wor worn out. It's a bit worn out, but uh, it seems to do the job quite nicely, actually. Once you've got the blade sharpened up. I am in no way or form an expert on planes at all. I think I may have only just figured out how to use one, I think. I've managed to, to get it to work ever so slightly recently. Uh, I do get the appeal because once it's working, there is nothing quite like being able to flatten wood with your own hands. Um, before that, it's just nothing but pain and struggle. You know, dragging it along the wood. But the truth of it is, we sometimes when we're using a new tool, seem to default back to that uh, tendency to not let the tool do the job for you. And I've been pushing the, the plane through. And really, I just gotta let the plane do itself.
There's a lot of um, wood left over on this one, but the, the stripes are coming out nicely. And I'm surprised at just how much of this guitar I'm getting done in the space of time. It's surprising the incentive that a competition gives you to do stuff like this. That green guitar that's on my channel that you've seen possibly um, took forever to build and it's actually not even done. Of course, I wasn't making it full time and I'm not making this one full time either, but having better tools certainly helps and a better working environment. So now that I've got my shed, my workshop, things go a lot easier, a lot quicker. It takes quite a lot of effort to turn the clamps around and so that's why I'm doing it left-handed. And it's surprisingly easy considering I'm using the wrong hand. I've got to admit though, this is fun. It's just so much fun. No notifications, no social media, no emails, no distractions, just me and my creativity. <laughs> And these guys on the internet they've done it getting their plane blade shot done some kind of deal with the devil they'll be joining robert johnson at some point in time i reckon there's no way you can get plane blades that sharp without a bit of supernatural assistance <laughs> maybe that's cynical or maybe i just haven't figured out how to do it yet never had a chocolate brown neck on a guitar before that's why I wanted the black the the brown walnut on the sides because that's just going to be so strange and unusual and unique and wonderful that's enough for the scrub plane on to uh, so that's number four I'll go into number five which was the first plane I actually managed to make work with any degree of success and so therefore is my favorite. Pretty and straight, actually. My wood is bent. This is not just the neck, this goes all the way back to the end of the body. And it's very much like um, the original Les Paul. Uh, the original Les Paul was uh, Les Paul making what he called the log. And it was essentially a guitar made out of a log. 
because he realized that the body itself didn't add any acoustic value to the tone whatsoever. But everybody was very, very disturbed by the shape of it, and so he glued some wings to it uh, to show that it actually looked like a guitar. It wasn't a Les Paul guitar at that point, it was just one of the original electric guitars. And this is kind of the same thing. I'm going to add some decoration to it to make it look like it's got a body, but it's essentially this is the guitar. So I'm going to put in uh, a break angle for the headstock. Make sure that the... Uh, actually, before I put the headstock in, I'm going to put the truss rod channel in here. And then I'm going to cut away the headstock break angle. I'm going to leave it all mostly intact until after I've dealt with the fretboard. And the fretboard is hanging around here somewhere in amongst my junk. No, it's not. Truss rod and my fretboard, which is uh, ebony. I've never had an ebony fretboard on any guitar I've ever owned or built. So this is going to be a first for me really looking forward to seeing how this turns out. I've just got to choose the right side for the uh, for the build and I'm not sure if to leave in the flex or to take the more subtle approach with less flex in it. I'm actually thinking leave it with the, the little white bits in but we'll get there when we get there. First of all truss rod. So as I remember it truss rod goes dead straight down the middle and the bolt comes to just flush with the uh, nut or the back of the nut so on here I have already marked it as well but I'll show you that in a moment so first of all a bit of planning I have already drawn some lines on there but let's uh, Let's do it properly. Here is my guitar plan. Here is my neck and body blank. And I need to go from the back of the body to the end of the headstock because this will include all of it. And so what I need to do is I need to line that up with the end and I need to put in a break angle. So the break angle, I'm going to use my angle finder. My break angle on this, I want 13 degrees. So I'm going to do it on this side. I could use trigonometry in this case, but I'm not going to. I'm going to set this to 180 degrees and zero it. Then, from here, because I want the break angle there, you can see I've got a, an occlusion, a knot over there. I've got a knot in the, uh, in the walnut over there, and that's going to get cut away. So this lower section here is going to be under the neck. That's what I've decided there. So this will be the break angle here, and I want it at 13 degrees. Just past it. Yeah, so there's my break angle. I need 20 centimeters. Just over, actually. There we go. There we go. Right, so I've got a, a pencil marking there. Not sure if you can see that. A pencil marking across there, because my white pencil doesn't work so well. I've made a couple of lines. I'll keep, when I bandsaw it, I'll keep it on the outside of that line. So this side of that line. What I need to do now, I keep this at 13 degrees and just check. I think this is a little oversimplified because I have already done it. I just want to make sure that I've got more than a centimeter yeah, on that side, which means I've got enough 
material, enough wood underneath here to accommodate the uh, headstock fully. It's about 12 to 13 millimeters from the edge there. So drawing straight down from there, it's roughly there. And that is a good, I should have just done it like this. 11, 12, just under 13 mil, which is fine. It needs to be 14 mil um, thick because of the tuners, but it's fine. I'm going to put a veneer stock on the front because I don't, as much as I like the striping on here, I don't want the striping to appear on the headstock. I still got to put wings on it as well. Square. And from that point on the neck, Squared that off there. And then just to make sure, put it up against the drawing. Down the center line. It's to the back of the nut. So the headstock side of the nut is where I want that line because that's where the break angle begins because the nut itself uh, is flat. So it requires a flat base to put it on. And I can put that nut directly onto this piece on top of that striping, or I can put it onto a shelf that I've routed into the uh, fretboard for that. So there we go. Now I can cut away that break angle, but I'm not gonna do that yet. And the reason for that is because I need to put the truss rod channel in here for the truss rod and I want that bolt head to sit flush with the back of the nut so essentially there using the truss rod itself as a ruler I have my position for the back of my truss rod channel. For the front of my truss rod channel, it's going to be a little closer. It's going to be here. Actually a little bit out. I just need just a tiny bit of wiggle room in there. There we go. So I've got the back and the front of my truss rod channel. What I need to do now is I need to find my center line. So that's 62.28, uh, 31, 28 divided by two. First time I'm using my brand new Bradol from J.E. Pan. 6288, 4, it was 85, 6, 2, 90. So that's uh, 31, 45. 31, 45. You might think I'm being quite pedantic with the accuracy. The truth is, I'm really not. Um, but the more accurate I can get something, uh, the more flexibility I have when things go slightly awry. Okay. I have my front and my back of my truss rod channel. So what I need to do, so the truss rod itself is approximately 6.1 wide, six mil wide. The bolt head at the end here is roughly nine. Seven point four eight. That's good. Right now the depth 
is important, extremely important. That's roughly nine. I have had nightmares where I've built an extremely expensive neck and I've drilled a hole in it and it went past nine millimeters and I wasn't able to get the neck as thin as I wanted to. And as soon as I carved away the back of the neck, a great big hole appears. That's never actually happened to me because I'm always too scared. Now I need a six mil drill bit. So before I do that, I need to find my center line or at least mark my center line so I get the, uh, the placement right. I'm going to just find my location. That is where you are. That is where you are. I now have the position where I'm going to drill the holes. Uh, to start the truss rod channel. What I do need to do though is ensure that I don't go beyond nine millimeters. I really hope you enjoyed that video. I have an awful lot of backlog of editing to do because I was trying to fit everything into a single episode. I've decided against that. I'm going to release smaller episodes more often. My six videos for the Great Guitar Build Off are going to consist of compilations of smaller videos that I am going to release. Thank you for getting to the end of the video to find that out. Um, I will see you all in the next one. Thanks guys, Gordon signing out.